day in their lives, day in their life. Ha, 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 ha. It's all the way you know. So I don't remember all the lyrics. That's a problem. Could I use that as our intro yeah. for today's episode? <laughs> <laughs> All right. First up are our daily quests, you know, where Canton kind of leads you off with some easy things. You know, dailies are pretty easy. Do them, do them daily, right? So Destiny 2. <sighs> Delayed. I can't, you know, the reason why I'm sighing is because like a month or so ago, they came out. Yep. There is no Destiny 3. We're going to roll out these expansions. In, in September of 2020, in September of 2021, in September 2022, we got a three-year plan. We're good. And then now they say, well, you know, COVID kind of delayed things. So we're going to November. It's not too bad November. if you ask me. Huh? It's not too bad if you ask me. Well, it's bad for, like, say, you know, Super Shadow on the show, Hear Me Out, seen every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time on Super Shadow's channel. He mentioned that, of course, the same time November... There are two other games coming out that he was anxious about playing. Cyberpunk. So Woo! <laughs> I forget the other two games right now, but there are other two games coming out in November also. So I'm like, hmm, what are you going to choose? So and we don't still have a date for so for a while. Speaking of which, wow, beta is now there. Okay, so it's supposed to be released sometime this year, but we do have beta out there. They add, add Shadowlands beta to the launcher. You have to opt in. Okay. And they noticed some recent changes to Druid and Paladin Covenant abilities. And we'll talk about this later on for opinions. They're adding, allowing beta to have add on. Okay. So I, I'll have to ask, we're, we'll get the beta to add on all Astro Jazilla's question because I always thought they always had them. Anyways, Final Fantasy 14, for those who love Final Fantasy 14, it's not my cup of tea, even though I know people who love the game and praise the company for all they do every time they release it, every time they add things. Uh, they, they're launching reflections in the crystal update or uh, crystal update on August 11th. Okay. So for those who are wanting, for those of us who are elder scrolls fans, so doing a Somerset celebration, when you defend the home of the high elves coming from July 23rd to August 4th. So you get to have some exp- uh, content there for your summer months when things get a little dry and you're tired of going out to the beach and you get sunburn, you're going to just sit inside and just, you know, Relax. Now, for a Kickstarter thing, because I do Kickstarter City of Titans. Progress? I don't know. It's, it's already late as it is, but hey, there's a patch to the Avatar building releasing next week, and it should improve, and overall, this patch should also improve functionality. I don't care, because I just, with my friend, not Fred and I, who play Champions Online, the big joke is, oh, what's their latest, what's their latest note? More lore? There was a point when all they did when their updates for Kickstarter was lore, 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 nothing about the game. So, anyway, <sighs> some and, delivery quests are better than the other ones. And this, be a trial this is an error. This is different huh? from uh, Ship of Heroes, right? Yes. Okay, I'm getting those two confused. Then never mind. Well, there are. I mean, I know there was supposed to be three. I do know of Ship of Heroes, Sea of Titans. I forget the third one is now. Right now, everyone's looking at Sea of Titans and Ship of Heroes, I'm aware of. Ship of Heroes, I think, is further along at this point. Those mm. people who want a City of Heroes offshoot because those who play City of Heroes have played Shepherds Online and said, no, this is no City of Heroes, mm. and they deleted their account. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I've had, to, I've had family and friends try to play this game to join, to join me, not Fred and I, and they don't like it, so. All right, we are done with my delivery quest. We're going to now shoot it off to uh, some, uh, sorry, that was daily quest, delivery quest, because we're going to have Solomon deliver us some news that he thinks is worthwhile that I didn't bother to talk about. Uh, I think one of the biggest news is, um, hang on, let me check my notes. The buyout of, oh my goodness, I can't remember their names now. Um uh asia conan uh the secret world what am i what company am i thinking of perfect perfect world is it no it's not perfect no. world it's uh oh is it perfect no it can't be perfect world hang on let me check my notes here um Funcom. yeah Funcom. Funcom. yeah there you go Sorry, they've been completely bought out i think by Funcom purchase was it 10 cent yeah it was 10 cent no! yeah Are you kidding me? 
it, it's a hundred percent buyout now. Complete now, Tencent completely owns. Um, um, you just said the name. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Funcom, Fun right? All and right. so, I mean, I covered a little bit on my on my show, but uh, over well, all in all. I mean, the reason why I, I, I bring it up is because Funcom, as far as I can tell, is a company that solely makes MMORPGs, right? So they're they're pretty up there when it comes to what we talk about. So is it good for the company? I don't know. I haven't really touched any of those, in, of those games into, uh, for what feels like a decade, right? But either way, they're still, you know, a pretty... They, they still own a chunk of, a, of the MMORPG pie here in terms of, um, you know, shares and influence and, and, and whatnot. And... The vast majority of the uh, of the opinions that I that I read on Reddit, on MMORPG.com, on MassivelyOP.com, all of them, like ninety percent seems to be pretty negative, uh, just because of you know I think one of the biggest is because of their distrust of the CCP, uh, but you know again the rest of that uh, tens or so percent aren't necessarily um, uh, too negative about it. They're saying that you know. Uh, Funcom was just at a, such a bad place. They're saying like, you know what? It wasn't until Tencent started to invest in the company that it started to actually turn a profit and keep those games alive. Um, now it could go either way, but I, I admittedly uh, lean more towards the negative side of things, just because again, I think the distrust of the CCP is a pretty valid argument, actually. Um, so, the, so yeah, there's that. I think that's probably the biggest news in terms of the MMO world. But other than that, um, yeah, I mean, there's uh, really, not, I mean, nothing really sticks out, uh, you know, pops to my mind. Nothing really sticks out other than, you know, getting, you know, updates on, you know, all the summer events that's been taking place, especially with uh, Lord of the, not Lord of the Rings, I'm sorry, the Elder Scrolls uh, and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest one for me, really. What game did Tencent buy out last week? Wait, another company they just bought out. I think. Oh no, that's another company. There's, there's like three. There's like three big Chinese companies. There's Tencent. There's um. Uh, get back to me on that again. I can't brain today. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it looks like there's a co- Chinese Chinese uh, holding company called Leiyu Never that heard of owns uh, majority of Warframe's digital extreme. Oh yeah, that's so true. Sony's looking to buy that. Yeah, you know, but now it's possible maybe Tencent is for that instead. I'm like, oh my word. What game company will no longer be owned by Tencent at this point? All right, anyways. Okay, so, all right, that's another topic later on. So we'll have to find out. So uh, that's it for your delivery request? Yeah, pretty much. All right, so Jazil, what do you have to deliver to us? Uh, it, mainly this week, there, there wasn't too much. Um, I just wanted to go a little bit more, maybe detail into the uh, Somerset um, sure. yeah. bounty that's going to be happening between the. I closed the window out, so let me uh, type it in. But I'm going to guess while I'm looking it up. <laughs> I think it was July 23rd through August 4th. Um, July 23rd that's... to August 4th. Yeah. Oh, that was right. Oh, wow, my. Brains working better That's what than I had I it. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it it's really pretty fun stuff. There's going to be, uh, of course, your typical uh, bonus resource nodes. There's going to be bonus uh, things that you can acquire through trials through the delves, um, both the um, public um, delves as well as the the uh you know ones that you can do as a single player if if you for whatever reason can't find any friends uh to play with which you should be able to because you should be friends with me and i'm on almost all day every day so <laughs> you at least have one person um but they also have the psychic portals of course and uh all the other cool world bosses and whatnot that you can group up and and do for some awesome awesome extra bonus loot that you don't get through the rest of the year, including the uh, abyssal geysers, if you've unlocked all that. Um, it, there is a new, I know uh, for those of you who like to collect the uh, mounts, there is a new Indric that uh, it looks pretty cool. It's got a kind of a 
light green kind of tint to it with the, uh, you know, the Indrix are kind of like a deer and a bird mixed together. Right. I know that sounds weird, but you should look it up. It, it's a pretty cool looking mount. Um, that That's something I'm definitely going to be going for as well as, um, again, you all know that I'm not really interested in it, but I'm going to give it to you guys because I know several people that do watch our show are interested in doing the the furnishing um, their homes. There is a huge list of items that you can get for your home in, in this event. So if you're into decorating your home and, and you don't have a whole lot of the Eleanor um, and Sigic stuff, this is your time to go get it. It's going to be a lot easier to get during that uh, event, as well as a group repair kits where you it doesn't just repair your armor but the armor of your friends and whatnot really cool stuff um it's it's real easy to hop on this isn't something that you're gonna have to be on all day for it takes you know if you've got 15 30 minutes during during the day to go in there and go get this stuff um it, it's pretty pretty easy to do and uh, like i said i would Highly recommend at least trying to go for the, you know, collecting the Endric berries to uh, get that mount. And um, if you're in, like I said, if you're in the housing, which I'm not really, I will collect the stuff if it drops for me. But um, I'm really after the mount, to be honest with you. <laughs> Who isn't? Uh, so there is, um, apart from that, they do have some new stuff on the... Uh, the shop uh, dealing with uh, the Curse of Vampirism, I believe, is on sale for the next few days. Um, if, if you haven't got that yet, if you're interested in it, there are some vampiric... Uh, um, there's a bundle, I believe it's 400,000 crowns, that you get a fountain and um, some other things for your home that uh, can either increase or decrease your level of vampirism. Uh, for those of you who might want an easier way to do that. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sure if there was a mount on the, on the gym shop. Someone came to my screen one time and asked me if I had vampirism or to give them a bite. I'm like, no. Don't yeah. Have um, <laughs> it, it can help uh, because you can either be a werewolf or a vampire if you, so desire to do that it can help uh with if you're a, a caster sorcerer m magician type <laughs> it, it can give you a little extra but the thing is that both of those come with pros and cons so you kind of got to weigh if it's going to be worth it to you um such as with vamp purism if you have fire cast on you it's gonna hurt twice as much as it would if you didn't um and so you you kind of got to balance that i i don't have vampirism on my match sorcerer either uh i kind of thought about doing it just for fun for a little bit but uh nah <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um that's that's about it that i had for this oh, week cool. yeah so yeah. that's good i mean i never really tried i mean i haven't not played eso for a while so i'm not trying any of these type of celebrations, so I should try. I'm gonna drop, jump in and try to get these things starting July 23rd to August 4th. We got a chance to do this, so we got about a week. So go do it. All right, that way we've been delivered. Okay, we are now where we need to be. So now comes our uh, the part where we kind of talk about who, well, our opinions, our thoughts on different things in MMORPG. So I thought about this week and the fact that um, you know we all stream. And some of us also stream MMOs. And so I wanted to ask the question about whether or not, like, you know, streaming MMOs, streaming and viewing MMOs, is it fun? I mean, obviously, we are streamers, but we also think watch people do MMOs. So I'm just, I want to ask Solomon, you know, about, you know, when it comes to MMOs, I know you played, you streamed MMOs. You know, I'm, I don't know, from your point of view, do you think that MMOs have, I mean, a lot of people play Fortnite. And watch these kind of things or fast matches. You know, uh, when it comes to MMOs, how are you going to get changed to? But now what are your thoughts about viewing streaming MMOs? 
it's kind of boring to be honest with you. <laughs> Are we watching or streaming? Um, well, well, let me let me let me take this. Uh, let me let me give you or there's two ways of answering that. Um, so on a personal note, I think I think it can be fun, but keyword being can. And what I mean by that is if you're going to stream an MMO, you have to do something uh, worthwhile, like somebody or something that people are going to tune into, you know, like if you're going to play it and just kind of do the, do the quests, it's like that. I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of boring because anyone could do quests. Now, if you're like top ranked PVP, you know, PVPers in the in the MMO, you know, that's pretty interesting because it's like, you know, a lot of people want to know how you fight, what rotations you have, what kind of strategies you use, what you do with your character, stuff like that. And people could actually see that see that real time and be like, oh, I play a warlock too, or a warrior, a paladin, etc. Whatever. And then, you know, and, and if you're there hauling butt and just like completely wrecking everybody, they're going to try to analyze your gameplay and try to uh, mimic you. And that's interesting. Even if you don't do that, PvP of and itself is actually pretty entertaining because it's competitive and people watch sports because that's competitive, right? right? So there's that element. So I think it depends on what part of the MMO that you stream that makes it fun. For me, I'm not much of a pvp -er, so I never really got that kind of audience, and that's completely fine. Now, all I really did was, you know, stream... The only MMOs that I really streamed was, like, Guild Wars 2, uh, Black Desert Online, obviously, Star Wars The Old Republic. And where I try to gain viewers is try to do the hardcore stuff like hard mode or nightmare mode raids and stuff like that. Because that's that could be pretty interesting, too, because a lot of people out there are trying to get to the top tier stuff. And, you know, they'll watch you play and, you know, how you take down a battle, a boss battle and stuff like that. And I think that's pretty fun, too. But I think there's a reason why most end game content start 99% uh, of all MMOs gravitate towards PvP because you know and you're facing against other players and that's the content and you know developers don't really have to do anything other than you know balance skill do the skill balances and stuff like that compared to like making a storyline quest where it actually takes a lot of resources voice acting dialogue writers blah 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 etc etc so or at least that's the way i perceive it i'm not a game developer so i wouldn't really know um so yeah i think uh, uh it, it with that being said, do I watch other players, uh, you know, other um, streamers yeah. uh, with their MMOs? Um, not not really. I tend to gravitate towards people for their personalities, uh, for the for the people that, that I, I don't know. I guess it's kind of weird saying it this way, but the type of person that they are more so than what they are actual streaming. And there's a huge thing going on between marketing. I know this is something that people talk about when you talk, when you take a class in marketing or something like that, you know, are you, are you trying to sell yourself, you know, your identity or, 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 or is it something else like what you're doing? You know what I mean? Uh, for example, um, uh, I think I think social media has a big pr a problem. I using I'm using the word problem as a colorful uh, adjective. It doesn't necessarily have to be a problem, but I'm I'm framing it that way. Where you have a lot of influencers trying to sell themselves, you know, and you know people are trying to and again as an influencer, you are the product. Uh, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. That's some you know, but it does relate to what we're talking about. So, um, very rarely do I watch somebody because they're playing a particular mmo generally if there is a problem that that needs to be solved is there something that i don't know how to do i'll just google it <laughs> you know and if google doesn't if, if google doesn't contain the answer then i will actually go to, to a specific stream of an mmo and then ask in the chat which i think is a great resource but that's last resort so yeah oh you're right because that's I me mean, i'm saying the same thing in the fact that i generally watch people for their personality people who what what they're given to me i mean i jumping into watching someone playing a game regardless of what it is i find that mmo is a little more challenging because where are you at what are you doing running around are you just grinding whatever right if you're in the middle of a raid I like them eh, maybe maybe i might watch it but mostly if i do watch someone for their gaming it's probably it's probably for the quick like the Fortnite or the war or war, uh, world of warships or whatever it's uh, Apex Legends or Valorant, where you can just watch it briefly and get out of it. She says, I don't like watching MMOs there. Grinding is boring to watch. Maybe if there's a viewer interactive event, that might be okay, but the chances of the watcher who probably already playing have time for that, that's kind of tough. But if it was like a new record-breaking thing in the game, maybe. Agreed, PPP 
would be watchable, especially if it's a competition. Right. We won't see it till next year. Um, but New World, because it's owned by Amazon, which owns Twitch, it's supposed to be more interaction in between the two. If you actually played that new game from Ubisoft called Hyper Hyperspace, no Hyperscape, they actually have where the viewers can click on uh, with a vote about whether or not you want to have you know unlimited ammo or no gravity or less gravity. So the viewers do affect the matches in there. So we got what you say. But, um, so Jazil, so I know you have streamed a lot of World of Warcraft in the past and even ESO. So what you and I know you've watched too. What are your thoughts on all this? As far as game streaming goes, I, I would say most people are into the esports and anything that's dealing with uh, fast action, uh, you know, liking it to movies that they would rather watch, you know. Um, terminator than bed of roses you know <laughs> uh because it is kind of a male dominated um you know as far as viewers go uh you know they're more into the action and the esports the competition and and if we're just talking strictly mmos which we are that most of the big streamers uh the the reason for it is because they're doing PvP within the game, whether it's World of Warcraft or uh, Elder Scrolls Online or, or what have you. Um, now, I have seen people be successful. Uh, I'll throw Gold up there doing other things, doing competitions, uh, you know, like mount uh, competitions. Uh, I can't remember what he calls them. <laughs> where they you know see who's who's got the mounts and get go through to the end till you know they've got two people against each other just you know competing to see uh who has the most rare mounts or what have you there's the transmog competitions uh you know things like that but i i can't say i had far more success doing world of warcraft and you can see that on Twitch that there are far more people watching World of Warcraft uh, than any other MMO. Um, ESO is actually like third or fourth normally uh, because a lot of people count um, Path of Exile as an MMO and that kind of uh, is normally in second place. Um, I as far as my viewing habits with people, it, it is, it's like Solomon said, I tend to gravitate towards, oh, Kenneth is on, oh, whoever, you know, Solomon's on, whatever, uh, based on my social friendships and my my social circle that of people that I just enjoy hanging out with more than the game that they're playing. I, I hardly ever click on uh, somebody based on the game that they're playing. Um, I mean, you're a great example, Ken. I mean, <laughs> you pretty much play a different game every day of the week. So it's like, I I am going to your streams because I enjoy hanging out with you, um, whether I enjoy the game that you're playing or not. It, it so happens I do like the games that you play, um, although I, I would like to see city of heroes come back uh <laughs> i agree with that <laughs> uh i watched that that heroes game that you play now and i'm like eh, i mean yeah. it's not city of heroes though dang it <laughs> but uh i i think if you just you know you've got the personality and people will gravitate towards you for that that you you've got a little bit of an edge there i think that there are things that you can do in, in the game uh in pve but I, I agree that you know if you're just questing that when i watch someone questing on a game that i play world of warcraft elder scrolls online guild wars 2 what ends up happening nine times out of ten is i'll watch for about 30 minutes and then i get that itch that i, I want to play <laughs> i'd rather just be playing myself than watching someone else play it and that may be a generational thing. Uh, I admit it for us older guys that, you know, we're like, well, I'd rather play it than watch it. 
uh, unless it's someone like I said, like yourself included, yourselves included. That although Salman doesn't really stream, but <laughs> it's true, I don't. <laughs> yeah, um, but if he did, I would I would be there, and, and the reason for that is because I'm friends with you guys, and I I enjoy hanging out with you, every yeah, no matter what you're playing or if you're just chatting, I, I I'm there. Uh, now you mentioned I, that I play different games, and what I found right. interesting. But this week I played two answer frost. Points. I did play, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, workers' resources for like a train game, and then also did Destiny Two. And while I had some consistency in people who watched me, I had new folks coming in too. What is interesting, I find people come in the game because they see, oh, oh, you're playing a game I like. Mm. They come in to watch someone, and and this is what happened. I think I saw with Till Truth when he was doing that card game Eternals. People want to help you. So they're watching you because they want to help you. they like, hey, I learned these things. Let me help you. It's quite interesting it's that true. they're not watching to see how good you are, say. In some respects, they're watching to see how good that's they true. are compared to, and I can help you with that. No, that's, I'm not, I'm not, it's not, it sounds negative, but it's not. It's more the fact that they want to give back to a fellow player what they've learned and already did. So well, that was, I thought it was interesting. Can I speak on that real quick? Because yeah, uh, I hadn't even thought of that, but that's absolutely true. When when I switched over to Elder Scrolls Online and, and started playing with the Our Morning Song people, uh, that sounds so rude. <laughs> My guildmates, uh, yeah, from World of Warcraft, I you know there was a whole bunch of them that were like, "Oh, you're back! Are are you?" back back or are you just playing it for a couple weeks and i was like no i'm i'm back back until shadowlands comes out <laughs> and uh i had uh, a a handful of of those people and then friends of them uh that came over and there was even uh one gentleman that normally plays on the european servers that came over to the American servers to help me out when I first got started. They they gave me, you know, uh, it, it was mostly in-game money, you know, to just help me get started. They knew that I, I wanted to get started with um, doing crafting and whatnot. So uh, a couple of the guys, they came in and gals too, came in and, and helped give me some starter um materials to get started with my crafting get it leveled up and whatnot and there was even a couple of them that saw me struggling at low levels with some of the delves that that you know they saw i was streaming they came in they were like oh dude i feel bad for you you've died 12 times in the last 30 minutes you want i i can get on and help you out and yeah so what you just said that's absolutely true i a lot of a lot of people did come on and they were like oh man it, and gave me pointers with like where to put my um, my champion points, and gave me pointers on like videos to go watch and, and different uh, websites I could go to that that helped them out when they got started. And so I, I think that you kind of did hit on something there that that a lot of people do like that feeling of giving back to the community. Maybe they when they yeah. first got started they had a lot of help, and now they're willing and wanting to help out people who are are getting started to uh get get them rolling and you know there was probably some bias there too they wanted to keep me interested on <laughs> in the game because yeah it, <laughs> they're like bias there. Yeah. they're like hey you know what i love this game and i've been trying to get you away from world of warcraft to come play with me and now you're finally here so here's a thousand gold yeah <laughs> yeah can you it's please happened. play yeah it's happened with eso with me too so i mean I, I, that's interesting i mean i, I thought that mm -hmm. was interesting uh, why people watch so anyways that was good so uh, that's our storyline you know if you're interested in mmos you got that from here that's us now we're going to do some escort course we're going to escort you to safety because because after all that's what the escort quests are all about we got to protect you get from a to b if we don't then it fails and we got to restart it <laughs> and we don't want to. Okay, so, and we hope this is the adventure of a lifetime. Maybe not. Okay. Anyways, so with beta with the beta coming out for uh, Shadowlands World of Warcraft, they mentioned that beta uh, to allow add-ons, 
which kind of surprised me. I thought or they had beta for add-ons. Uh, I wanted to ask the question, add-ons to game, is it, or also known as mods, okay, good, bad, or indifferent? So I'm going to go with Jazio first. I want to ask him, first off, has beta had mods in the past? I think that they always did, I thought. Maybe not World of Warcraft. And of course, what do you think about mods? Good, bad, or indifferent? They did have uh, a community of people that did mods previously in, in, in the previous uh, at least two expansions for World of Warcraft, but they were not on like the Curse website. Okay. <laughs> they were on other al alternative websites. So yeah, you know, had to be cautious of what you were downloading onto your computer. Um, you know, make sure you got your virus scan going and whatnot. <laughs> it, <clears throat> but you should always do that anyway. Um, however, it looks like it's just going to be, they're going to be cool with it. Um, as far as Bl Activision Blizzard goes, they, they, they're they okay with it. I think this is probably the first that they've given their blessing for people oh, right. to okay. do it. Right. Um, where previously, yes, you could, but a lot of, I, I had heard stories, I, I don't know, I can't confirm, of people that were running, um, especially in BFA, were running add-ons and they ended up losing their beta access because mm -hmm. uh, Blizzard was not okay with that. They wanted you to test it without add-ons. Mm -hmm. um, now, I am kind of on Blizzard's side here that I, when you're testing, that just complicates because now you have to worry. The, the whole point of this, of doing alpha and beta, is troubleshooting issues with the base game. And it, if you introduce mods yep. into it, then you yep. got to wonder, okay, is it this something to do with the mod or is it the game? And so I'm kind of on their side that I don't think it's really a good idea to introduce mods into beta. That's just a personal thing because I, I feel like we need to test the base game and make sure it's it's good for release. Um, and I, I could go into more detail, but I, I know I did that uh, a couple of shows back where I went into detail about my experience with doing beta for uh, Battle for Azeroth and how they really were not listening to us. Uh, you yeah. know, it, that was a horrible experience. And hopefully, it sounds like they learned their lesson, but I think that they're... Uh, I think that they were right in, in not allowing um, add-ons. Now, am I okay with add-ons in as, yeah. when you, it goes retail? You... Good, bad, um, I absolutely, I mean... absolutely. I now, and when we were playing classic uh, last year, I tried not to mm. uh, because I wanted to get the full classic experience. Um, but I ended up towards the end there. I went ahead and got like a UI replacement, um, and I think that was about it, really. I but did questy also. Yeah, I I just uh, I have no problem with mods uh, if if it's something that makes your experience more entertaining for you and it makes things easier for you, then uh, go for it. And if yeah. you if you don't like mods, then just don't download them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I, I, I like, like them. yeah, I like them too because it provides extra things that the game developer didn't do. And I get it. You and it says somebody else to like UI. I mean, I you know I've been big into changing my UI for World of Warcraft, you know, and then I also I did a bunch of mods in Fallout 4 because it got me some things I wanted done. Like, one thing I hated about the game was that it wouldn't let me clean up the streets of Sanctuary totally. So, I got a mod that basically got rid of all the crap lying around. I wanted a pristine city. Uh, Gaffa said, You want mods because people are going to use them for the high and the mid in PvP trading. So you want to know how difficult things are once they are released to everyone. All right. Uh, I mean, that, so sorry. I, I can see that, but we need to make sure that the base game is 
up to par first. Absolutely. And and then at some point in beta, late in beta, introduce mods and 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 that helps out the mod creators as well, the mod devs, that they they can see what issues that they're going to have with the game and get them fixed so that day one their mods are going to work for for everyone. So I yeah, it, I'm I'm agreeing with you, but let let's make the base game work first yeah. and then. <laughs> All right, so Solomon, I know you know, I you've been playing Fallout Four. I think you got some mods for that. Some, uh, but that's <laughs> not quite an MMO game. It's a more standard. That's why people are kind of fed up with with Bethesda for not allowing more mods. It's like basically why are you clamping down? Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so what about you when it comes to MMOs? Do you are you good, bad, or indifferent? And have you used MMO uh, mods for MMOs? Well, I actually do have a question though. Like I, I've used those kind of mods too. Um, there's a there's a mod similar for Star Wars or Old Republic called uh, Star Star Parse, I think it, it was called, where okay. it, you know it measures your DPS and you know same stuff that World of Warcraft use u- users use or World of Warcraft players, I should say. But it, but then it's like my question is, it's like why what's what's preventing the developers from making their own sort of DPS meter? Like why do they have to rely on third party? software because i mean you can think about the fact that they are fit focus on the game and the content of the game even though i have a friend of mine who uh well he's not working with bungie uh he used to work for another game that made um uh wwe uh mobile game he's a ux designer and so he knows that the first thing we the consumer are working are seeing is the ux the ui you know, it's a user interface. It's user experience. It's it's the thing that makes us want to stay there and stay in front of a computer. So while I understand how devs are busy on the base game, I question about whether or not why don't they give us more when it comes to the UI because it's what we see. Right. Well, I mean, how much more resources could it possibly take, though? I mean, I, I, get, I get that argument, but it's just like, I mean, if a bunch of people who aren't even getting paid are able to do it, so what? What makes? I mean, I don't know. I just <laughs> it's just a, oh, yeah. it's just a it's just a DPS meter that you just put on your UI. I mean, it's not like it's not like additional voiceover and acting and mocap and all that other stuff, right? So I can't again. I'm not a developer, and never was, but I can't imagine okay. it can't be that much more difficult. I mean, it's just a bunch of software, right? So no, I mean, <laughs> everyone wants their own thing. So let's just have somebody do their own thing. The the thing that I noticed like the in damage when it comes to like World of Warcraft they always they show you already a damage meter, and so like yeah you can do more we give people more but now games actually allow you to move things around great you know but still I mean it's like why not put more effort into UX it won't take much more to do it it seems like you know so I don't know right so yeah you, you're a you're a fan of mods then. Well, it's it's a slippery slippery slope in my opinion because it kind of it kind of reminds me of the whole pay to win situation. Like, what items is considered pay to win? What item is considered, um, you know, uh, um, pay to convenience? You know, and and what what item is considered just cosmetic? Even that's a debate somehow. And and so the reason why I say that is because, uh, you know, what what at what point do you think mods actually give you the upper uh, advantage? And and I get that. You know, a, a DPS meter oh. is just a DPS meter, you know, but it still shows you like actual stats. It actually shows you hard numbers. Right. And maybe that's an advantage somehow over people who don't use it. So is it a necessary thing to actually even use, you know, when you're playing a game, especially if you're going to go in the end game hardcore levels and stuff like that? And I don't know. It's a fair, fair uh, 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 assumption or point, whatever opinion. Um. So I don't know. I, I at one point I get it, but at the same time it's just like again, if those mods are, are allowed, then why not some other mods, you know, that kinda might fall in the gray area and I can't think of any examples uh right now because I never I hardly ever use mods when I play MMORPGs or in the or in the online game. I only use mods on single player games, Fallout 4 being yeah. like the most prime example, right? So I feel like uh y- I mean i'm kind of lukewarm on the subject kind of fencing on this one i get it i think there are certain instances where uh certain mods are absolutely necessary 
Um, but then again, and then again, you know what I said earlier, then if it's so necessary, like why not have the devs just make one for the game? Uh, right. But then at the same time, it's like, if it's, if those, if these mods are, are available for you to download and use, but these aren't, it's just like, who, who gets to determine that? Who's the arbiter of, of, uh, of, uh, of what's to say one gives you the advantage over another is it strictly just for pvp what about pve mods because i know there were uh mods that help you uh map out certain like you know like if you're on a map you have fog over the map where you haven't um uh discovered it or you know opened up the area and there was a mod there was a mod on guild wars one where you actually download something where it actually helps you cover uncover the fogs and get a hundred percent cartography but who's not to say that's not cheating you know and so it's just slippery slope so i'm kind of like in between the two for online games particularly that that's i hadn't really thought about it being a an advantage so um i do know that some guilds in the past have required that if you want to go raiding with us you have to have these mods okay you know you have to show your your raid tracker okay right you know, how much damage you're outputting, you know, you want to know that number. They've also talked about the, of course, in the back in the day, the EGP, EPGP, you know, maybe still do that now with regards to like how much uh, you've earned when it comes to getting a loot in a raid. Uh, it's funny how um, Godfather says the only mods allowed in WoW are tracking mods and altering the look. Um, I wasn't aware there was an actual, I mean, because there's, there's mods for tra- tracking quests, there's obviously mods tracking your damage. There's, I guess that's a good point. They're all tracking stuff. Um, but that's such a, I had thought about the, some mods being an advantage. I find that, well, for me, the mods I put on my World of Warcraft when I was raiding allowed me to be, uh, uh a better, a better raider because they set up the, it set, I could set up the, the UI to the way I want it, the way I could see it. So I could see the raid, I could see my damage, see what my, my cooldowns are. It was better for me in my visualness on my screen. So does that give me an extra benefit? I suppose, but we all get the same. We all get the same benefit because we all get this. We all can get those mods if we want to. Yeah, and there's Peggle too. <laughs> so yeah, interesting. So yeah, I mean, I've done. I use a ton of mods. Well, not a ton of mods. World of Warcraft retail back when I was raiding. You know, I reused uh, some mods in Elder Scrolls. Um, I also used mods. I think. I don't think I had any Rift. I think I might have. Might have had. A Swotor mod. I can't remember now. I did use a lot of mods for Fallout 4, and I know my son had like over 200 mods for Skyrim, but that's because Skyrim is my my territory. Oh yeah. All right. So I don't know, Godfathers. Do you use any uh, any mods? How about you, Hotshot? Uh, playing some playing any MMOs? Do you use uh, add-ons or mods? <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> so there you go. There you got our opinion. You got our our view on on mods and add-ons it's a cool thing because i didn't realize that world of warcraft didn't allow for mods to happen in beta now they're allowing it this time around so they're making changes but again they may also have a better way of change uh better way to track the problems the, the bugs okay all right we're done with our our escorting hope you guys are safely there daily boss mods is is an at is everyone should be using dps trackers you know, I tell you, Deadly Boss Mods is the tool that everyone needs to use, period. Okay, If you want to be in any raid, any anything, you need to do that. All right. So our class quest, we're going to do a shout out. Uh, Reign of Plays has a podcast called uh, Casually Casual Cast. <laughs> <laughs> it's mainly about World of Warcraft. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I got some of these uh, notes that came into mind was I was listening to the podcast today. And uh, they were talking about the uh, upcoming Shadowlands uh, character creation, you know, and they want more features. They want more ability to, to modify things. Or some people complain that some of the hair tiles are too, too modern, too real world. I'm like, well, you don't have to choose if you don't want to, okay? So if you have a chance, go to whatever you use your, whatever you find your podcast to listen to Casually Casual Cast, a World of Warcraft podcast. Uh, this week, she had her sister, Eva, Eva Chats, on it. And again, they were talking about, would they love to have a ability to have a dad bod? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm walking around the neighborhood trying to exercise going, no, you don't want a dad bod. And so I even tweeted out, said, no, dad bod. I don't want a dad bod option 
in character creation for any game. Okay, so yeah, so there's a shout out. Uh, world events, we had to had to cancel our New World uh, launch party. So because New World has been pushed to next year until May of 2021. We will be planning on doing a launch party for WoW Shadowlands. Uh, we have not determined the dates yet because they haven't named, named the dates yet. Uh, we have not had any interest or thought about doing, maybe, who knows, uh, Destiny 2 or any other MMO out there that might be uh, advancing. Even though I think if Blue Protocol does have a launch date, we should do that for sure. I don't you know? I don't think they have a launch date. They just said uh, end of 2020. Okay, there you go. Maybe we'll have one of those that. So that's our... That's our, our, our world events. We plan on doing that to get the community to join us. Uh, so we obviously do play MMOs, and so we're going to be going AFK. Uh, I'm trying to use all these different terms from the MMO <laughs> world to do for our, our segments, okay? So I think it's, you know, so yeah, anyways, we're going to go AFK. So we're going to end this by saying what we're going to be doing, like myself personally, about the verse of the day. What was the verse of the day? Verse of the day was what? Well, I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart, learn your righteous judgment. You can find me playing here. I'm going to my first myself first. Kenneth, Kenneth, live on Twitter. I'll be playing some Elder Scrolls Online evening. So everyone wants to join me. We are welcome to join me doing that. I, I said our great guild, our morning songs there. I'm trying to keep trying to plug away with my uh, world quests with regards to uh, the whole Skyrim stuff. Oh, John 3's take. That's my favorite. My favorite uh, verse, yeah, John three six. For God so loved the world, I think He only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have ever, but have everlasting life. All right, Solomon, where can we find you at, and what in the most how are you playing besides BDO fishing? I think uh, right there. Yeah, <laughs> now it's the same. Nothing's really changed, other than just kind of, I don't know, just. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to find a new game to play. I mean, I'll always play BDO, but again, you can always play it in the background. So uh, other than that, you can still find me on YouTube, which this podcast will be on at Coffee and RPGs. And you, again, you can find me on Twitch, but I hardly stream them. I used to stream almost every day and now it's just like once a week uh, at Solomon underscore SK. But you can definitely find me primarily at Coffee and RPGs. That's for sure. All right. Uh, so, Jaziel, what about you? Um. You can just find me here on Twitch and Twitter, basically. <laughs> Discord, at Serge Azeal, wherever. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty stuck on Elder Scrolls Online right now. And with New World getting pushed back almost a year, uh, I guess we're not going to be doing that. Um, I do plan on playing Shadowlands when it comes out, but I... I have some folks who have been trying to get me back in uh, World of Warcraft like right now, but uh, eh, I'm going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait. I, I did pre-order Shadowlands and I will be getting oh, it. So I didn't yet. Yeah, I'll be there, but um, um, for right now, it's just Elder Scrolls Online. I'm having a blast playing it. Uh, I've been trying to piece by piece 100 percent every zone in the game as well as uh you know get all the museum pieces for all the different museums and the bard college and all that stuff so that's been mm, right fun and overwhelming at the same time because i think i'm making progress and then i open up the world map and i go Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, you know that's good though that that means that i've got lots of entertainment ahead of me so that's what i'm doing all right thank you for everyone for being here watching our wonderful show the trinity mmo show talk about mmos every week we are here on this channel or our channels plural and you can find our video on on coffee rpg's youtube so join us there thank you so much for being here and uh we'll see you next week